It's 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. We'll go ahead and call the City Council meeting for the City of New Ulm to order. Item number one, 1 1.1, public notice to conduct meeting by teleconference. All councillors are here. We'll move ahead to item number two, consent agenda. Councillors, what are your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve those. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. At this time, we're going to drop down to item number 6.3 under new 6.2 under new business, Moody's Investor Service Bond Rating. Thank you, uh, John Burmeister, PFM. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been over a year since I've been able to uh, come and address you, so I appreciate the opportunity today. Um, I think you have in your packet the report from Moody's Investor Service. They did reconfirm uh, the city's AA2 rating. And, uh, they, and you'll notice that given this is a PUC revenue bond, they've also put the security of the PUC um, information on that as well. Um, and, and then the other thing you may have noticed that this was what they released was more of a press release because the city hasn't released your 2020 audit yet. Uh, they'll be calling uh, Nicole up when that comes out and then they'll regurgitate all the new information for 2020 and beyond. And, and so when we do your uh, bond issue in August, you'll have a full credit opinion uh, with that new data from 2020. But other, other than that, just keep up the good work and uh, keep, keep uh, doing what you're doing. Thank you. And no so this question. We do need a motion to receive the report. Yep, when we you're would ready. just need the motion to receive. I'll offer a motion to receive. Second. Motion and a second to receive notification that Moody's Investor Services has assigned a AA2 rating to the City of New Ulm General Obligation Public Utility and Revenue Refunding Bond Series 2021A. Any more discussion? Is this a vote or a roll call? Just, it's just a motion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Item. 6.3 yep. as well. 6.3, mm-hmm. All right, very good. Earlier uh, this morning, the city solicited proposals from underwriters. Uh, we went out this morning with 3.3 uh, million of general obligation public utility revenue bonds. And uh, this is gonna fund, there's actually two components to this financing. One is a, a, a some sewer improvement projects. And, uh, and there's also a, the refunding of the 2011B that was payable from the electric fund. So we were able to combine those two purposes together into one big uh, $3.3 million uh, bond issue. You can see through the sale of results, if you have that in front of you, we ended up receiving uh, three bids. Uh, Northland Securities uh, bid with your local bank, uh, Bank West, and Robert W. Baird, and then finally in the back, BOK Financial Securities. And then right in the middle, uh, kind of uh, off to the right, is, there's a, 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 a TIR, true interest rate. Mm -hmm. You can see that the true interest rate on this proposal is 1.1%. This is a 13-year term, so it's really 13 years for a 1.1%. You can see the cover came in at a 1.1441%, and then on the back, a 1.1478%. So very good uh, interest rates. Uh, they're still very low, and they've still kind of held uh, held the, their own. They've gone up a little bit, and they've come back down a little bit, but they're still uh, very attractive. And then the refunding component of this, uh, the, 11, the 11B, we, we're going to take the proceeds of that portion, pay off the old bonds on June, for, June 8th of 2021, and then we'll be paying on the new bonds. And so the, the PUC is gonna save $10,000, a little over $10,000 per year for the next six years. And so it was good that we were able to combine the new money with this refunding, keep the cost of issuance low to take advantage of the low interest rates. Uh, so we were very pleased uh, with that. Um, and then uh, the, the motion, you can see that after we did receive the bids, we did lower the PAR amount to 3270 and that resulting in the 1.1045%. So that would be the final power amount of the bonds. Um, and then we have been working with Nicole and Chris at the PUC for looking for other refunding opportunities. Uh, the city does a really good job of paying off your bonds pretty quickly, so there aren't a lot of opportunities on that. But there is another PUC ref, uh, transaction 2013 bonds that's called December of 21. Uh, so we've worked with Nicole. We're gonna try and combine that refunding series with the city's GO series in August, and then try and refund that in December of 21 and save some more money on that as well. Assuming interest rates still stay where they're at today, they're still looking pretty attractive. So with that, I'll open up to any questions that you might have. 
<clears throat> if the interest rates would rise this year, would you still plan to revisit that with Nicole? Yeah, we'll want to we'll want to pay attention to that because if they rise too much, then it wouldn't be worth doing. We'd probably have to pull the sale. Okay. Yeah, but they're still looking pretty attractive today. So it's kind of a you have to wait and not sleep at night and hurt, worry that rates aren't going to go up any higher than they are. And and uh, luckily they've been pretty stable for a long time. So um, we just have to hold off for a few more months. This rate is lower than last year's, is it not? Now this is a this would be the PUC. Um, I think it was probably higher because this higher? is a little long. The city only sells ten year bonds. Oh, okay. This is thirteen. Right. So the park and rec rate in November was like one point one eight, so it was a little higher. But it's Still a really larger good. dollar amount. Mm -hmm. And the city's I think last summer was just under one. I yeah, think. the ten year term. Yep. Yeah, they've been remarkably pretty stable. Yeah, definitely in that nice. They only stay that way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good time to be borrowing, not necessarily investing your yeah. excess cash. Yeah. I'll go ahead and offer a resolution, waive the reading, authorizing the issuance, awarding the sale, and fixing the form and details with 3.3 million general obligation public utility revenue and revolving bond series 2021A and authorize the mayor and finance director to execute the bond documents on behalf of the city of New Ulm to finance public utility wastewater projects and refund the 2011 public utility revenue bonds. A second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? <laughs> Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Wormka? Yes. President Becker? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to number item 3.1, fireworks license. We didn't do the consent agenda, did we? Yes, yes you did. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, mine is still loading, but I'll <laughs> motion to approve 3.1. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Um, to approve the issuance of a fireworks license for American promotional events, DBA TNT Fireworks, to sell fireworks in the Walmart parking lot, 1720 West Ridge Road, New Ulm, for the period beginning June 20th, 21, and ending July 6th, 2021. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 3.2, pull tab, bingo pull tabs and raffle gambling permit for Cathedral of the Holy Trinity. I'll make a motion to approve the issuance of a lawful gambling permit for Cathedral of the Holy Trinity to conduct bingo pull tabs and raffles gambling at Cathedral of Holy Trinity at 605 North State Street on Sunday, June 27th, 2021. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 3.3 temporary on sale intoxicating liquor licenses for Brown County Agricultural Society. I'm on motion to approve the issuance of, a, of two temporary on sale intoxicating liquor licenses to Brown County Egg Society to sell alcohol at the Brown County Free Fair, 1201 North State Street, one license for the period beginning August 11, 2021, and ending August 14, 21, and one license for August 15, 2021, subject to compliance with all city and state requirements. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 3.4, temporary on sale 3.2% malt liquor license for Cathedral of the Holy Trinity. I'll offer the assurance of a temporary on sale 3.2 malt liquor license for Cathedral of the Holy Trinity to sell alcohol during the church festival, 605 North State Street on 6 North Street on Sunday, June 27th, uh, subject to compliance with all city and state requirements. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number 3.5, Plaza Garibaldi Liquor License Extension to Outdoor Patio. Council President, Councilors, uh, before you have today um, Plaza Garibaldi's request to um, extend their liquor license to the permanent patio they constructed, uh, this patio um, they were or they did construct um, 
during the pandemic uh, and they wanted to uh, permanently put that uh, put that out there so they have constructed it, it is it is uh, fenced off and enclosed at this point and they would like to extend their liquor license from now until their renewal which would be June June 30th yeah they did an outstanding job of putting that patio together it's yep. Beautiful and can't wait to use it. So I'll make a motion to offer the resolution and waive the reading to approve the request from Plaza Garibaldi, 1707 North Broadway, to authorize the extension of their liquor license to a permanent outdoor patio beginning May 5th, 2021, and until June 30th of 2021. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Wormka? Yes. President Becker? Yes, motion carries. Item number 4.1, pre preliminary plot of Korth's second subdivision. Madam President, members of the City Council, Dave Schnobrick, Community Development Director. Uh, this particular request was considered by the Planning Commission at their April 27th meeting. And at that time, the request was unanimously recommended for approval with conditions. The Applicant property owner is Jean Clark and Jennifer Clark. <coughs> Street address of the property is 213 Casey Road. And the property is generally located south of the Casey Road and west of Boundary Street. This particular parcel of property was annexed into the city in January of 1999. A single family dwelling is located on the property. Uh, the property currently consists of 2.51 acres and the proposed plat would subdivide the property into two lots. Uh, both of the lots um, easily comply with uh, city code requirements. The recommended conditions are number one, that they pay the platting fee at $210. Number two, that they provide an electronic file of the plat in an AutoCAD 2016 or newer format. Three, that they provide a 10-foot utility easement on all street frontages and a five-foot utility easement on each side of the lot line between lots one and two. And then four, uh, that any residents constructed on lot one will connect to city utility systems and that the utility hookup charges will be determined by the city and uh, public utilities commission at the time the request is made to connect to those systems. I should note that that's part of a development agreement that was assigned with the property owners when it was originally annexed into the city. That would conclude the uh, report. Thank you. Motion to approve with conditions the preliminary plat of course second subdivision. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 5.1 performance measurement citizen survey results. Council President and Councilors, uh, before you have the uh, citizens performance uh, measurement survey results, um, the city is pretty much where it usually stands. Um, uh, and you know the biggest the biggest areas um, or the lowest scores always fall uh, on street and in snow plowing. But even with those numbers, they actually did increase this year. Uh, and like always, fire is always rated rated the highest. Um, you know, a year with COVID and and us not being able to provide uh, a lot of services being shut down. Um, overall, I think we did very well. Uh, you know, looting, looking through some of the comments, you know, it is kind of the same same kind of three things: utility bills. You know, utility rates too high. Um, Streets are terrible, snow plowing, you know, can we get it closer to the curb? Uh, and that's always a battle every year, whether we're too close or not close enough, you know, we, we do. Um, Jeff does take a look at those comments and he tries to get as close um, as he can, but again, you're eyeballing it 
when the snow's out there, sometimes you can see the curb, sometimes you can't, sometimes we're over the curb. Um, so uh, we try our best, um, but overall, I think it's right in line uh, with what we normally do. Uh, I think we're still doing a very good job. You know, some of the other things that kind of stood out, um, you know, were some some blight issues were, were raised uh, on there, which we have begun spring enforcement for residents, um, and we will be bringing the, the zoning ordinance um, on the business side of things back to council, uh, I think in June, hopefully the first meeting in June. So once that's enacted, then we'll, we'll start enforcement on the business side to clean up uh, the commercial side of things as well. Uh, but spring enforcement is, is, is underway. You know, I always take a look at, at this every year and, and I would have to say Ward 3 had pretty high scores in comparison to Wards <laughs> 1, 2, and 4. But, um, <laughs> But you're right, fire department always rates high and people always complain about the streets. But I noticed a lot less complaints and I was really surprised by, because of the high increase in our gas bills in February that I thought we were gonna get blasted on this survey and we didn't, nope. we really didn't. So I really wanna compliment our city uh, department heads and staff on the work that they do because this really does reflect um, the overall work that they do each and every day when they come to work. and. Um, there was, as you said, the average scores are continually in the high or the satisfactory range, which is pretty awesome. There were none in the unsatisfactory or low, and we have never had, that I can recall in our 10 or 11 years we've been doing this, have ever had any super low scores. So again, hats off to our staff, and I'm, I'm glad that we still do this. I think that we seem to see the same results, but that's a good thing, that it is a good thing that we're doing well. So. I myself was happy with it. I mean, the last year, everybody's aware, COVID, everybody's homebound, mm -hmm. picking everything to death and apart. I thought we did very well surviving a year like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just touch base on a subject that we did some work on last year that I see here that we haven't discussed earlier, the railroad crossings. Chris, have we got any um, indication, you know, we've got a, some people making comments on here from the public, but we're gonna be addressing any railroad crossing intersections this year uh i've you know Not that one. Yeah. what's that good news on that one joseph okay. see joe smiling <laughs> i hear about railroad good tracks news. all the time <laughs> uh, uh madam president and city councilors um there are some crossings that the railroad is still have scheduled <coughs> for resurfacing um on some of the crossings in town they haven't got to them yet um recently completed the boundary street improvements and then um, we've been identified in federal fiscal or state federal or state fiscal year 2025 for some uh, potential funding that will come down uh, from the state for some um, gates and lights at, a, at three crossings in town. So if that holds true and that funding trickles down, um, at least there'll be lights and gates at three, three of the crossings in town. But yeah, we continue to work with the railroad as they have funds available and whatnot to coordinate the activities for the surface crossing upgrades that are needed at a few crossings in town. So that's the update as of now. Okay. Good. I know last year I brought up the new cat um, scores being relatively low and, and it still didn't increase as much as I would have hoped to. And, and it's an area that we're continuing to discuss, continuing to work on, trying to bring in more programming. Mm -hmm. I was hoping the high definition stuff that we added last year was gonna help. And um, so we'll see what this year does. We'll keep continue to work on that area for sure. I thought overall um, that the survey results were pretty good as well, pretty stable. Um, and with COVID, uh, have you noticed other cities struggling that kind of do self checks with because of COVID? Or I would say not. I haven't seen too many, you know, outreach to too many that, that do the community survey. But, you know, if, if you take a look at Mankato, they, I mean, they literally just opened their doors a couple months ago. So, again, it's I think we're right in line, you know, providing the services that we needed to provide, you know, through the pandemic. You know, with the EDA, we were able to do a lot of those things to help. Um, you know, we didn't have to wait for state aid or federal aid to do a lot of the programming. So I think we were a lot more agile than a lot of other communities. Um, and so I think that kind of helped push us through the pandemic to help where we could uh, and then focus on areas, you know, um, that we needed to. Thank you. So 
I'll go ahead and offer a motion to receive an order filed the 2020 Performance Measurement Citizen Survey and authorize the results to be submitted to the State of Minnesota to qualify for the funding for the Performance Measurement Program. A second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? I think I'm going to just, one more catches my eye here, and it's from Ward 1, and it's just the cost of the Family Rec Center, that, you know, just keeping it affordable for the community. And I know we're going through COVID and things, and we're going to have budgetary and things of that nature. And when we do get up and going, we're going to want to see that facility used. And we have to be mindful of that because there's going to be a lot of families that uh, might not be able to afford that, you know. So I'm just throwing that out there that stuck out also. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 5.2, second consideration of ordinance number 2021-042. Council President, Council President, Councilors, uh, before you have the second reading of the micromobility uh, ordinance uh, and uh, the Park and Rec Commission at their April 29th um, meeting, um, unanimous, unanimously voted um, to recommend adoption of uh, of this ordinance, and um, had a with a six to one vote in favor of allowing uh, the e scooters on the bike trail uh, capped at 12, 12 miles an hour. Madam President, uh, let me just to clarify, I think the council is aware of this. This item and the next item on the agenda mm -hmm. are interrelated. Um, the second item depends upon this ordinance being in place. Right. Because okay. the license agreement is, is tied in with that. Yep. So that's the purpose of having both of them before you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burt. I'm going to just, uh, I didn't have anybody in the community that said that they needed to have these scooters on the trails, you know, reach out, you know, I've, I've received the comments that they would felt it's for walking and biking and, and they were strongly in support of keeping it that way. And that's just, I'm going to listen to the people. That's the feedback I got from them. Madam President, you know, I, um, I go back a few years when we looked at golf carts uh, coming to town and being used on our streets and and so many people said this is never going to work there's going to be lots of problems lots of accidents um, lots of issues and talking with an officer today he said there's been none um, so I don't know it, it's you not. we're bringing 50 scooters to town and not all 50 are going to be on the bike trail um, you're going to have minimal use on a bike trail there's not a lot of people I mean the bike trail is used but it's not used extensively where I don't think these electric scooters are going to be an issue. Now, I've had some calls for it, some against it, probably a few more against it. Um, but I, I also then remember the golf cart issue, and then people were so against that, and it turned out to be nothing. Um, I just don't think all 50 golf or scooters are going to be up, running up and down our bike trails. I just think it's going to be used sparingly. It's going to probably be used by a few tourists that come to town and maybe want to see our bike trail or a few people that want to do something on an evening. I don't see it as an issue. I'd like to see it passed. And if we do have an issue, we can always bring it back and, and restrict it. Um, I, 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 Councilor Schultz. Um, that, that's kind of where I stand on it. Th that is the main issue that they think the council had to determine, but that really relates to the second item, the right. license agreement. I was going to say, that we should just approve the ordinance and oh, yeah. discuss okay, that, it on the that, next that's one. That's yep. not addressed in the ordinance. Right. That would be addressed in the license right. So agreement. speaking ahead of turn is what you're saying? Yes. It's just, it's premature. It's got to be discussed, <laughs> yeah. but right. Yeah, it's that's all, fine. all tied together. Yep. I mean, so we can open it up, that part of the discussion. I'll just uh, conduct the second Conduct second consideration of Ordinance 2021-042, fifth series, amending the Section 4 of the City Code of the City of New Orleans relative to business regulating, adding Section 4.67, Subdivision 1 through 8, micro-ability sharing options. I'll second it. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 It, Madam President, I, I think this was intended, but it was the second consideration, but I think the council should formally adopt the ordinance. Yeah, I think the resolution should be to adopt the ordinance. 
Okay, I'll make the resolution to adopt the order. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll second that. A motion and a second. Any more discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Uh, Councillor Mack? No. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Warmka? No. President Becker? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 6.3, or I'm sorry, 6.1, Bird Micro Mobility License Agreement. Okay. Um, Council President, Councilor, so before you have the license agreement, which will spell out kind of the do's and don'ts uh, that Bird can, can do uh, within the city, and looking at this, you know, there's, there's going to be sharing options. Um, coming in the future you know again this isn't something that's going to stop at scooters there'll be other things down the road um, but this license agreement sets up the framework that we can adapt to anything in the future you know known or unknown at this point in time and it sets the parameters um, of how to do things so again it, it kind of spells out um, you know promoting the use of city uh, safe 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 use of the city right away uh, ensure the safe and, re uh, and reasonable operation of micro mobility, micro mobility uh, operations and, you know, again, promotes economic development and quality of life. You know, this is something that other cities are doing, um, you know, across the U.S. Uh, as we look at, you know, what what are people using to get around? Not everyone wants to drive a car anymore. These are things that um, are going to be, you know, essentially you can look at it as, for every one scooter that's out there, you're essentially almost taking one car off the road. If I rent one for lunch to drive down to McDonald's for lunch, that's one car that's no longer on the road, kind of the sustainability of stuff. So what the license agreement actually spells out, though, um, is compliance with existing uh, rules and regulations, uh, data sharing and privacy, uh, education requirements for the users, enforcement, fees, uh, insurance, parking of uh, the scooters, the program scope, and the safety requirements. Um, so Bird is really willing to work with us. They'll you know, if we don't want them on the bike path, that's going to be part of um, what they want, uh, what they'll program into the scooter that users are going to see. Um, they will program the scooter so they have a top speed of 15 miles an hour, but it was recommended by the Park and Rec Commission to lower that to 12. They can program that into the scooter that when they're in that area that it, the top speed is going to be 12. It's just programmed in. So um, it's not, you don't need someone there with a speed gun. Oh, they were going, you know, this other speed limit. They're going to geofence that, geocode that as um, 12 miles an hour and the scooters will essentially be capped at 12 in that in those specific areas. Um, so uh, I would like to call out, so um, one thing that the license agreement does call out um, is compliance with uh, Minnesota State Statute 169 and specifically uh, .225. And so part of that state statute um, does state that a person may operate a motorized foot scooter on a bike path, bike lane, bicycle trail, or bikeway, um, and that allowing that is up to the local authority. So you as a council have the authority, uh, and Minnesota state statute allows them on, my, on bicycle paths and, unless the local jurisdiction doesn't allow those. So um, just you know, more food for thought that under the state statute, they, they can be on on the bike path. Great. I, and yeah. Madam President, um, I agree with everything that uh, City Manager Dalton has stated. Uh, under state law, basically, the motorized foot scooters are considered and governed so people have the same rights and responsibilities as a bicycle user. Um, they are supposed to be capped at a top speed of 15 miles per hour. Um, if we're going to restrict it lower on the bike trails, we could do that. We also have the right to prohibit them from going on the bike paths, and that's, I think, the one thing that was to be determined. And if the council was going to prohibit it, we should put that in this license agreement. Um, we would have the discretion to modify that, depending upon, how we, depending upon the final language that we decide to use in this. Um, we want to give the city some flexibility in being able to monitor this and adjust once we see them in operation. Uh, but the companies that are entering into these also want to know 
what they've got. And they, they don't want the rules changed substantially so that the people couldn't use them. Um, so we'll, you know, we're going to reserve the right, though, to control our streets, our rights of way. Um, they're not going to be going on the sidewalks. That's illegal. So, um, and also, I think under state law, the users have to be at least 12 years of age. Small children couldn't be on. Say that there. again. Under state law, my understanding is that you have to be at least 12 years of age. 12 years really. But on that, though, I believe this company, you will have to be 18 years old that's yeah. to operate them. Because mm -hmm. that's a commercial company. They're renting it. Right. If right. somebody was a private owner and they were 12, right. they could yeah. do it. They could do it. But yeah. They can decide. And, you know, if anyone's going to challenge it, that's going to be the company's problem. Not right. Ours. Yep. So. You know, I want to make a couple of comments. It was a lengthy discussion at the Park and Rec meeting. I mean, they discussed the pros, the cons to it. Everybody's aware it was a six-to-one vote. The Park and Rec Commission, they were willing to give it a try. I mean, we can always, if it doesn't work, okay, we're not going to allow them. We're having too many issues. I'm going to comment on Councillor Schultz. I remember when we did the golf carts on our streets. My God, the sky is falling, and nothing became of it. Noam was all upset that, God, we're going forward. I mean, I would like to give this a try if it doesn't work. I get 50 phone calls that says it's not working. I've had, yes, I was contacted by people who weren't for it. I was also contacted by people who were for it. There were also people on the 50-50. One resident I talked to said, every day a bicycle goes by me flying at 15 to 20 miles an hour scares the heck out of me. So let's put then, if we're that worried about it, let's put the speed limit at 12 on the bike trail for bicycles. I think that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to give it a try. I don't think the sky is going to fall if we give this a try. When you try to think about who's going to rent these, and it's more than likely going to be couples, tourists coming to our town. Oh, that'd be kind of fun. Let's go do that. They're going to go other places too. They might go to Flander. They might go here. They might go there. They might go down, especially part of the downtown bike trail that's really kind of nice and cool looking and um, it's not going to be teenagers running around on these because they got to be 18 to, to rent these anyway. And they got to pay. I mean, they're paying for use of this. It's not free. Um, so I just think the quality of the folks that will be using these um, are going to be good citizens and good to the rest of the people on the bike trail. I, 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 ho I don't think we're looking for a, a problem here. So. No, I completely agree with you, too, on that. Um, people aren't typically going to rent scooters to go take the whole 13 mile bike loop by any means. This is for the tourism, for Johnson Park to go downtown. Um, my only reservation, I mean, besides the fact that I was contacted, but nothing but negative, would be what are we opening up for the future? By allowing, I mean, this is an electric scooter, but what's the next thing that's gonna be down the road that we're also going to be, well, this was electric, and it says right on the signs, no motorized power vehicles. It was made for walking and biking. That was the only reservation I have, is that that trail was made for biking and walking. And that's what the people in my area that have reached out to me to talk about, well, what's to stop the guy with an electric golf cart from taking it down to go see the river? Well. What are we opening ourselves up for if we start allowing one little thing and one after the other? I know this, yeah, like you said, the sky is not going to fall because we let scooters out. And this is something we can always circle back if it is an issue. So in yeah. that, I'm in favor for. Yeah, and we would just change the sign. So it would be, right. you know, again, scooter, we would put allowed on there. Because, yeah. I mean, again, you really look at it, and I know a motorized bike is not considered a motorized vehicle, but it has a motor on it. You have to pedal it, and then it keeps you at that same speed, and you can coast with that. With the mm -hmm. electric scooters, the minute you take your hand off the throttle, you come to a stop. So, yeah. again, almost safer at that point in time, and we're capping it. They are able to be capped at 12 miles an hour. I like that. That's, so, that's just fine. Yeah. You know. you know, and I was contacted. All, it was all negative. You know, people wanted it for recreational, and that's what it was designed for, and you know, we had the letter I think all of us received, you know, about adopting, uh, possibly adopting the state uh, trail mm -hmm. in that had segways, you know, and I thought to myself, you know, segways twice as wide than a scooter, you know, so at first I was like, you know, a go for it, you know, because, you know, they, yeah. they're a scooter, you know, but we don't have any segways that I'm aware of within our community at this point in time, but, uh, you know, and then yeah, I had the people that said this is going to help the tourism. You know, they want something to do. They might do part of the loop or, you know, uh, go check out different destinations within the community and and on that aspect. So, 
but uh, I'm in favor of trying to get a lease agreement going here with mm -hmm. Bird Mobility. Yeah, I saw in the paper today, Moorhead's looking at the same exact program tonight at their council meeting. Yep. So it's, they're out, they're, this company's out and about. Um, I would like to just kind of make a couple of comments. You know, I did receive some feedback from citizens and residents about not wanting them on the bike trail. Um, I too have been a walker on the bike trail and seen bikes whizzing by me. I've been trying to do some research in what other areas are doing, and the reality is that this is pretty new, and there's not a lot of research that's being done on it. Uh, but going into kind of the golf cart, um, you know, question, you know, sorry, I have a piece of hair in my <laughs> Where do we draw the line? Um, you know, golf carts, when you look at the weight and the width of those, those, the bike trails and the walking trails, the, the recreational trail, and then do we want to define the word recreation, you know, is used for, for things like that, but it's not designed for golf carts, just like some roads are not designed to have, um, you know, 12 wheeler trailers or 18 wheeler tractor trailers on them for those reasons. And so, you know, not to say that this would have never come up with golf carts, you know, but, but I think that there's a time and the place. Um, there's obviously a need. I think that it would be helpful with tourists. I would also encourage residents, you know, to come take the, you know, go down there, take a look, go see the stops. The 13 mile bike loop has stops near Shells, near Herman Park, um, near some other places. And so, you know, maybe this would be an opportunity for local people that don't normally get out and do those things. It gives them access and a way to do that independently as well. So um, just from what I've seen and what other cities have been adopting, I'm also in favor of allowing the scooters on the bike trail. Um, Madam President, there's one thing I think that the council should be aware of, and that's the way that the ordinance that was passed tonight is worded and how that might tie in with the license agreement and specifically the vendor bird that's been negotiating with the city to actually try and bring electric scooters to New Ulm. Um, the license agreement that's before you now says that it applies to micro mobility vehicles as defined in our ordinance. And the ordinance defines them to include bicycles, electric assisted bicycles, motorized foot scooters, any other transportation device. Bird is strictly scooters, as I understand it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, of course, there are different places throughout the country where you can rent an electric bicycle. So this ordinance would apply to that. And to the extent that there's been some discussion about, well, you know, this, these are scooters and how they operate. You shut them down, they'll stop. Not like an electric bicycle. Um, this would mean that if a company came in and wanted to rent electric bicycles, this license agreement would apply to them as well. So what it means is if, if one of the, the senses of, I've seen hearing from the council is if the vehicles would be allowed on the bike path, but capped at 12 miles per hour, that would then apply to anything that's coming under this license agreement, whether it's a scooter or a bicycle. The other thing with the bike path, um, and I'm sure that uh, Tom Schmitz could straighten me out on this, but my understanding is we have an extensive loop in New Ulm. Part of that is kind of <coughs> a sheltered area where it goes away from streets and everything else, but it's all interconnected. And I, you know, as we're talking about the bike paths, if you want to have the speed limit apply, just so we're clear on this, does it apply to the entire course of all the bike trails or paths in New Ulm, or only those that are sort of sheltered and off by themselves? I think that's where people may expect more serenity and, and not as much speed, mm -hmm. but we've got one system, as I understand it, in the town, one long continuous loop. I yes. believe... Director Schmitz, what, didn't the, the park and rec, we discussed that about it's the, the entire bike trail. If they decide to go on it, it's the 12 miles an hour. No, it's only the, on the street portion would be the 15 miles an hour because that's a, literally yeah, a public yeah. right away. But yeah. it's the physical bike trail that's, desi you know, that's not part of a and city that, street. That's the part that yeah. we could control. Yep. So if the idea would be that would be done through signage, 
Um, and also with an alert to the the operator. But I guess if the again, if these people, the companies are going to you know monitor their yep. and cap their speeds at twelve yeah. on what they're renting. That's all they're going to do. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's true. Yeah. But they, they yeah, they're going to geofence it. So on the bike trail where we say it's twelve, they'll be able to go fifteen. But once they hit the bike trail, it it'll limit it to twelve. Oh. They'll mm -hmm. govern it. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through programming. Technology, Roger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but that brings me back to the question about the motorized um, bicycles as well. So how, how would the wording work? Is it an all or nothing with the ordinance? Well, it's something where if a company came in, and again, this, this is going to apply to companies that are leasing these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a commercial thing where they've got to get a license from the city to be able to rent these to the public in New Ulm. And the company that's inquiring and wants to do this mm -hmm. is talking about electric scooters only. Yes. But the next company might want to do electric bicycles. And so that's something that would come under the ordinance. It would come under this license agreement. Mm -hmm. And... I guess I don't know to what extent that would raise additional concerns. Presumably, they can go faster, mm -hmm. but they're still bicycles. So. My understanding is from previous conversations, there were some cities that simply did not adopt an ordinance per se. Is that correct? Um, a couple of cities that I reached out to, again, just where Bird was setting up, they didn't even do an ordinance. Um, because they just treated them like bicyclists and they said, hey, it's not written in the ordinance. You just have at it, you go, and you just buy a business license from us and you call it a day. Um, you know, other ones did. You know, other ones have done ordinance and, and agreements. Um, it really just depends on the city and how they wanted to, to follow the rules. But I think the license agreement and ordinance as spelled out um, kind of spells everything out. I think it's really good. Um, kind of spells everything out. And again, it helps the company out too, because then they don't know we're going to pull out, you know, pull the rug from them, just like, you can't go here anymore. And it ruins their business model at the end of the day. Because again, it's, they're still trying to invest, you know, in the community, their time and effort. And, you know, they're relying on us to kind of be, show our full hand and show them this is, this is what we expect of you. And this is what we expect from you. So, um, think, um yeah. you know, the reason definitely to have the ordinance and the licenses yeah. I know when these companies got started, in some cities there were really issues where yeah. the things were scattered all over, whoever yeah. their local person was was not taking care of them. Yeah. And so what clout did the city really have? Yeah. And that's why we've got this, is if mm -hmm. there are problems with that, <clears throat> problems with how they're running the business, mm -hmm. we've got some specific things we can do yeah. to try and get it under control and bring it in the line. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Mr. Contract? Uh, I think two years is what they're looking for uh, at a minimum, and then we can we can revisit it after a year again, or even sooner if there's issues on the bike trail and we just don't like it. We can if, talk if to them. If we approve it tonight, we could, and and if we approve the bikes on the trails and yeah. scooters on the trails, and if we decide it's just not working, we get a lot of complaints. Mm -hmm. and we could can we either include it in the current contract or have the contract dated so that we could review those restrictions for 2022 i think in the contract it states that in the license agreement we reserve the right to um cancel or modify to, to modify routes and where they can go i, I think I, yeah, cause I absolutely would if yeah. if we had a lot of issues we're getting complaints yeah. um from citizens i think we obviously would need to make some changes but again i'd like to see yeah. if it sounds like we can terminate it on 14 days notice yeah Oh, awesome. so, yeah, you okay. can terminate, we can amend and, you know, bird, you know, in my conversations with them there, they'll do whatever we, we ask as far as allowing, if we don't want them on the bike trail anymore, they will zone it off. So they, they can't, they won't work on there. You know, one other comment in my mind, getting these ordinances started, we always have the power to change them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way the world is going, everybody's preaching electric, let's do electric. I believe we're going to be back here with some other type of invention has two wheels and electric motor. I, I just believe it's coming. Yeah. Along with electric bicycles, I mean, that's, you're hearing a lot more and more about yeah. that as well. Yeah, they're outstanding. But yeah, and you got kids with these Hoover boards. Yeah, you know, Hoover and, boards. And yeah. What will come up next yet, you know, so. 
But I'm absolutely in favor of Bird getting going with this, yep. getting, getting something new for the community. So I will make a motion to authorize the city manager to execute the micromobility vehicle sharing operations license agreement between Bird and allow the city manager and city attorney to make minor changes to the agreement as needed. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? How do we work the, is that with the understanding of what we talked about tonight with the trails? That was in the ordinance. It's already in there. Or do we need that? That was the first thing. Okay. All right, just making sure. Any further discussion? In favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 6.4, reassessment of unpaid Lakeside Village 2005 special assessments. And city councilors, uh, Joe Statham, city engineer. Uh, this is a item that comes up uh, usually once a year, uh, usually in the fall, but due to the number of lot sales we've had in Lakeside Village Edition, um, working with the finance department, we are gonna do this probably twice this year. Um, so the utilities and gravel roadway surfaces were constructed in 2005 in Lakeside Village. That um, uh, development, for the most part, went tax forfeiture. Those lots are starting to resell. Um, so in order to recoup those uh, assessments that have not been paid, um, we need to set a public hearing to reassess those uh, lots now that they've been sold and been constructed on. So this um, action item would be to uh, approve the assessment amounts and then set the public hearing for June 15th to adopt those assessments. I motion to approve the reassessment of the following unpaid 2005 special assessments in the Lakeside Village edition, uh, $6,266.97 on lot 17, block 1, Lakeside Village, $8,355.94 on lot 12 of block 2, Lakeside Village, $9,748.59 each on lots 3, 4, 5, block 4, lots 1, 5, and 6 of block 5, lots 14, 16, and 17 of block six, all of the Lakeside Village edition, and set the public hearing for Tuesday, June 15th, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. Second. Motion and a second, any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 7.1, report of claims paid. I'll offer a motion to approve 3,994,000. 104 and 59 cents. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. With no additional business, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>